On this episode of Gun Talk Nation, we're going to talk about what do bullets do into targets, into ballistic mediums, and also into real targets, and through barriers and all that other stuff. Today on Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by Caldwell Shooting Supplies. You know them, you love them. They have all kinds of cool accessories for your shooting needs, and also Springfield Armory, as well as ATN Optics. ATN Optics, um, man, they're kind of like the new gen of optics, it, thermal and night vision, and have Wi-Fi and GPS built into the scopes. And, you know, you'd be surprised at how much value there is in those scopes and how affordable, frankly. So check them out at atncorp.com. Today on Gun Talk Nation, we've got Mike McNett from Double Tap Ammo. Matt, Mike, welcome in, man. Oh, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. So we have worked together over the years, and I think for those who don't know about Double Tap Ammo, they're surprised that when they look at what you guys do and they go to your website and they go, dude, they, they do a lot of stuff. I mean, tell them about who you guys are. How'd you get started? Okay. Um, really, it's, it's, it's interesting that you say that because now we're the number two largest uh, uh, number of SKUs, number of uh, variety of loads <laughs> uh, in the industry behind federal. It uh, helps to be ADD when you're loading ammo You're exactly like, i can't just do nine that's, every day that's right i have to have not have to have I have to have 13 loads of nine and i have to have <laughs> some 350 legend at the same time as right. 358 winchester you know, just everything so uh, basically uh at the end of the day i i uh i started the company with four 10 millimeter loads yep. um back in 2002 um uh i really loved the 10 and it had been neglected Let's put it that way. You, yeah, for a long time, you were kind of known as the 10 millimeter guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's funny because you were there in that little weird group of 10 millimeter fans. That's right. For years the and outcasts. years. And now in the last few years, you're, you know, it's like, yeah, see, I told you. That's right. <laughs> it's like yeah. catching on. Yeah. It, it went from oh, the 10 what? What is that? It's, mm -hmm. it, we don't need that. It, it, it'll take your arm off. It, it kicks too much. <laughs> it went from that to, to now here comes uh, some larger manufacturers making pistols for it. You know, mm -hmm. obviously Glock was the driving force, right. and then after that, you know, other, I mean, pretty much everybody makes a 10 millimeter now. Yeah, they're uh, actually are they're purposely bringing out new models that are in 10, and and I've seen it, and you, it's interesting now because when new products come out or videos about products come out, the customers have a voice, yeah. whether it's on social media mm -hmm. or YouTube or wherever. You see a lot of people commenting, and a lot of the comments are, ooh, make it in 10. Yeah, exactly right. They want to see that. Um, but it, we're out here on the range today doing some ballistics testing, doing some filming, and we were talking before we started is how much testing you've done over the years, mm -hmm. and I think it's always, I guess I'm using how, again, people have a voice. They like to argue on the internet about calibers mm -hmm. and bullets mm -hmm. and what works and what doesn't. And I think that a lot of these folks have opinions, but they have not tested it. That's and right. you, you, you've actually tested, I mean, how much of your stuff do you test? How often do you test? Uh, all of it. Uh, and right now we're at 482 loads um, and 84 calibers, because okay. we just brought on 350 Legends. So <laughs> that's why it's on my head right now. Yeah. But 84 calibers. So look, there's a ton of different things we've done. I. It was last year, so it's not up to date, the number, but um, I looked at how much actual ballistic gel that we ordered. Yeah. Um, and, of course, once you make the gel with it, made gel, uh, it was about 26,000 pounds of gel. What? That we've made. So, yeah, that's just... Over the years? Yeah, over the years. That's, <laughs> that's since, I think it went back to 2005. So. Wait. Say that again. 26,000 pounds of gel, 13 tons of gel <laughs> that, that we've made over the years. And so each one of those blocks is 20 pounds. Yeah. So you start to start to do all the, uh, you know, the, sure. the, all the addition and the multiplication. And before you know it, you're like, that's a lot of gel blocks. So I, I guess, you know, as you shoot into gel, obviously we use gel because it's a very consistent medium. It kind of mimics uh, tissue, whether that's hunting or defensive. Um, are there any are there any surprises or maybe things that people listening would go, huh? I wouldn't have thought that. Uh, there, there is. Um, there's 
barriers have a huge effect um, on uh, bullets and people don't realize it. And, yeah. and barriers can be hard and barriers can be soft. So leather, denim, mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, windshields are nasty on them. They're tough. On uh, them. Yeah. So we do it. We, we're doing a lot of law enforcement uh, stuff lately. And, and when you get into windshields, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, it not only deflects the bullet, but it also um, really, it hammers the front end of the bullet. And so if you're, the bullet's not designed um, to hold together when it hits a windshield, a lot of times it'll come apart. Yeah. And so uh, a lot of that, that's that's one thing that surprises a lot of people. The other thing that surprises a lot of people is when you drive it faster, sometimes it doesn't penetrate deeper. Some really? People, yeah. Some people will say, okay, well, uh, if I have a 9mm 124 with this one given bullet design, mm -hmm. let's say... Uh, uh, Let's just say uh, a, a gold dot hollow point, nice mm -hmm. hollow point, hits at 1,100 feet per second, and it expands to 53, 54 caliber from 35. Right. And when it does that, um, it goes in, let's say, 16 inches. But you drive it at 1,300 feet per second. Yep, crank it up. Yep, crank it up. And what it does is it opens up the parachute. Okay. Yeah, and so um, now it's 75 caliber. Right. And... Um, it does a lot more damage on the way through, but has a shorter wound channel. So it becomes, and, and so I guess people would argue which is better or which is worse. Of course. Um, that's a, depends on what the goal is. Yeah, there. exactly. So if you, <clears throat> if you're trying to go as deep as possible, um, then, uh, something that opens up not quite as much, uh, is a better tool. You, you guys have one that was, what'd you call it? Controlled expansion. That's right. So you're actually on purpose delaying the expansion or, or lessening the expansion? Yes, make it so it's more, it's a more, it's a slower, more consistent expansion rather than opening the parachute. Right. Because literally when you, when you see what it does in, the, in gel, like after the first inch, a lot of, a lot of good hollow points are opening up right away. Right. And so a more controlled expansion is opening up right away, but it's not opening up all the way right mm. away. And so it's opening up as you're going into the wound channel. Let's and, get more penetration. Yeah. And yeah. it looks, instead of looking like a gigantic mushroom, it looks more like a big, like a boxing glove on the end of your arm. It looks like oh, sure. it's more controlled. It's more, um, uh, it's smaller, but it, the wound channel is deeper. So the, the volume of the wound channel is going to be really similar if you've got the same weight bullet going the same speed and opening up. But um, if you have something that opens up quickly, the uh, it's going to have a wider wound channel. It's going to more a larger uh, permanent wound yeah. channel, and more things cut and chewed up. And then the other is going to the, the 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 opposite of that is going to be a smaller, uh, more controlled expansion. It's going to be a longer wound channel, just sure. not quite as wide. So I mean, is one better than another, or it just <clears throat> depends? Um, for so let's say for home defense, let's just say. Um, uh, Let's say that you or I, you know, we've got families, mm -hmm. um, uh, kids in the next room. Right. You never know where they're going to be. Uh, you want something that doesn't penetrate quite as far. Sure. And so um, it makes sense to not necessarily have um, something that penetrates 20 inches and uh, and goes through seven walls and all that. Right. You'd be, you'd be better off. And that's one of the reasons why I'm firmly against using FMJs for defense. Uh, some people like that idea. I, I don't. Um, yeah, FMJ is really, it's, it, uh, it may deform a little bit, but it's not going to expand mm -hmm. and it's just not going to slow down. And, that's right. And when you're talking about, you know, concerns about overpenetration, it goes through kind of like all the walls. Yeah, it, it never <laughs> stops. It doesn't really <laughs> slow down. Exactly. You take the, the weakest target round and put it through walls and it, it, it just, like you said, it just keeps going. Yeah. Um, you take something... Like uh, I'll use, for example, what I use for home defense, and that's a, it's a 10 millimeter, it's our 135 grain, 1600 feet per second. Going and, fast. Yeah. And it, it just, it, that hollow point opens and fractures and, and has uh, lateral wound channels that co kick off sideways as it, as it goes through okay. gel or, or bad guys. And, and when it does that, it fractures its weight off. And sure. it has less momentum as it's going sure. through, and so what it actually penetrates through less wall material than a twenty-two hollow point. Mm. Wow! I think people would be surprised at that. It's pretty a dang fast. Cool. Ten millimeter that that expands and breaks apart on mm -hmm. on hidden target, less yeah. penetration than a twenty-two hollow point. Yeah, and <laughs> and then and then if you don't hit a wall and you just hit gel or you know 
or the bad guy, mm -hmm. um, you get 11 to 12 inches of penetration. So, yeah. and but a wound channel that's literally as big around as your fist. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, that is interesting. Wow. So it does a lot of damage in a shorter wound channel. So people like to argue about calibers. Mm -hmm. um, nine versus forty-five versus three fifty-seven sig versus three eighty. The the three eighty ACP, which is mm -hmm. actually has grown in popularity as far as the guns being sold that are chambered in three eighty. That's right. Um, all these shield EZs, all these Ruger LCPs. Um, but the gunny folks, a lot of gunny folks will go, I wouldn't depend on a 380 to sure. save my life. I hear it all the time. You see what it does compared to other stuff. I mean, what's your take on it? Uh, with the right hollow point, it is as good as pretty much anything else out there. Obviously, more speed and weight can make a larger wound channel and make it. But really what you need is penetration and um as big a wound channel as you can get for that caliber. Yeah. And so um, the one thing that 380 really struggles with is, um, for the most part, either either have something that expands, opens a parachute really fast, mm -hmm. and you end up with six inches of penetration. Which and is really not desirable. It's, no, it's not enough. I would actually rather have an FMJ than something that opens too quickly and... Um, and gets caught up in five or six or even seven inches of penetration. I, I would rather have an FMJ that goes all the way through an 18 inch block uh, because at least you get the penetration. At least yeah. you, so typically you get one of two schools with the 380. You either get, um, and that's actually the first, the first bullet I ever designed uh, was for a 380 ever. Really? Yeah, because um, uh, you either had something that, I, I, I shot everything because when, we, we aren't owned by a bullet company, so we can shoot anyone's bullet. And we, sure. They, they all want to sell them to us. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, let's find one that's perfect. Mm -hmm. And I, we couldn't find one that opened up reliably and penetrated deep enough. And so I actually had to design my own bullet because they were either opening up and going, you know, six, seven, eight inches in, pen, in, in, in gel, or they weren't opening at all at those low speeds. And then they were just punching like an FMJ all the way through. And yeah. there was nothing that ended up in that sweet spot, that 12 to 14, 15 inches that I right. really think is ideal. There was nothing. And so um, actually that 95 control expansion, meet, meet the control expansion. That was actually yeah. the first one of the control expansion lineup that um, it opens up. Instead of trying to open up like a nine, it opens up small, a little fist. Mm -hmm. And so it opens up to 52, 53 caliber. It's a relatively smaller hollow point that opens up, but it goes 13 and a half to 14 and a half, no matter what you put it through. Well, and also when you talk about barriers and mm -hmm. stuff, if you've got a bullet that opens up real quickly and maybe doesn't have quite a, that much penetration in gel, mm -hmm. if you're talking about going through several layers of clothing or hitting a barrier, it's going to mess up that performance even more. That's right. Right? Yeah, exactly. If you get it, a lot of times... <clears throat> If you have too small of a, of a hollow point opening, um, it'll plug it right up, yeah. and then it just it just shoots through, and it just like an FMJ. Um, yeah. If you have a gigantic uh, hollow point that just trying to expand with that in there, um, then you can get it to you can get it to expand quickly, and then if it's heavy enough, like it's leather and all that, then it actually can lose some of its momentum, and then you get it expanding quickly, and then not going as deep as it would, you know, yeah. if it was a bear just bear gel and and that's not ideal either no i mean that's the tough part i think for bullet designers and ammo companies is you're trying to get this performance and you can't control the situation yeah right you don't know the angle the distance the barriers all these things so you're you're <laughs> you're seeking for it to do perfect no matter what the condition which is kind of not possible exactly but um it but you know i guess that's why you strive to you know look at all these different barriers and, and different scenarios now you guys have real world stories of the products being used mm -hmm. defensive uses uh law enforcement and actually if you're all right talking about it we were actually uh, at a facility. I was at a media event. I think you were on a, a separate event where, um, frankly, a, a person had a negligent discharge. It happens. Yeah. And unfortunately, I wish it never happened, but we know they do happen. Yeah. And um, 
this this particular person, she, well, you pull a trigger on a loaded gun, and the gun does what it's told. It's supposed it goes to go off. off. Yep. And she shot herself in the leg mm-hmm. with a with a with a double tap. Um, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it was with a hollow point. Yeah. I mean, it has nothing to do with you guys, but I I say that because I remember. Yeah, actually, this is so strange, but you recovered the bullet, mm-hmm. the, and it looked like a perfectly mushroomed bullet. Um, you were there. Yeah. I mean, what was, God, what was that like? I mean, it yeah. it because you designed it to do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. And uh, I mean, what are your? I guess what what are your takeaways from it? I mean, you know, obviously, don't point your point a gun at yourself and pull the trigger maybe yeah step that, one. that's a that's a thing yeah. it, it also was the last uh media event that we ever went to with hollow points we used to really? always do media events where we bring in all the gun riders and bring in all the people from tv and mm-hmm. and say shoot what you carry don't sure. shoot fmjs here and 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 we did that for a decade and that event right there i said oh yeah because um, i mean she had the same wound one way or the other because she like you said, she pulled the trigger on a perfectly good gun while it was still pointed at the holster, yeah, it was a, really. a mistake was made. And I will say this, to her credit, what's interesting, and tell me if I'm correct on this, um, she was actually um, a, a reporter working in the mainstream media. Something like that, Something yeah. like that. Yeah. And so she wasn't really a gun person. First time at shooting. Okay, so she's, she's taking a course, kind of doing this media event, mm-hmm. and this happened, and... Luckily, she went. Ended up being okay. They yeah. they they rushed her to the hospital. She got treatment. The next day, didn't she show up? Yeah, she showed up on on crutches because uh, they didn't do any structural damage. It it it, it just did some uh, damage to the tissue and the muscle. Right. And she showed up and got her certificate because it was the last day of the class. And and she owned up to it, right? That she oh yeah, had oh, yeah. made the mistake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. It was it was just, it was just a mistake that sometimes happens on the range, and uh, unfortunately. Um, it was it was at the hollow point, so did a little more damage as it went through, and yeah. like you said, it was it went through went in thirteen what? inches of penetration. So she uh, was re- looking to talk through. I mean, I think yeah. the the story I heard was she was reholstering yes. finger on the trigger. Yep, she was reholstering Don't with the finger this, on the trigger, so the holster pulled the trigger for her. Yeah, as she went in, um, and then it it went in uh, right below the holster, and then came out right above the knee, like it. it Which it, is fortunate. Yes, but... it really is fortunate. It came out above the knee and. And then it was just laying on the gravel. Wow. Um, and while I was, I had my hands on the wounds and waiting for the ambulance to come, the, uh, uh, one of the other people that were there at the range grabbed the, the hollow point and, and showed it to me and said, hey, isn't this, isn't this a great performance? I'm like, why don't you talk to me about this some other time? Yeah, I can't. Uh, Jeez, <laughs> that's so... So, strange some people yeah some people they they, they it, was, it was a long, little uncouth but um but nonetheless uh uh that that hollow point did do exactly what it's supposed to do but um it did she did show me because i i literally had my hands on the entrance and exit wound that that i've i've seen uh, ball wounds on people before mm-hmm. and um you sometimes can't find the hole and yeah. um uh this one here was no was, mistaking it. Yeah, it was no mistaking. It, it was, was bad. It was bad. So, uh, what other stories? I mean, I know that your stuff has been used. Um, we're talking about Las Vegas PD had an incident. Uh, it was the uh, it was Marshal Service in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. okay. And um, uh, there was it's really interesting. Uh, it was five or six years ago. Um, there was a, a guy that uh, I guess was fed up with a judge and or whatever his version of events was and. Took a 12 gauge and tried to go into the federal courthouse there, and he didn't really uh, think that one through. I don't. Think. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't. He didn't really. He didn't really get from A to B to C, <laughs> and what was really going to go on there when C came down. But uh, nonetheless, he went in there with a 12 gauge, and um, of course, our our marshals weren't having any of that, mm-hmm. and uh, so they basically carry three to seven sigs, and they, uh, you know, they returned fire, and and he fled, and um, he duck behind a car on the on the street out front of the courthouse and um they were they were firing at him and he was kind of popping up uh, whack-a-mole so to yeah. speak uh popping up and shooting back at them and um luckily wasn't aiming because his 12 gauge could be ugly yeah and um uh there's two officers and one of them went to 
to slide lock and um, he sensed it or saw it and um, the bad guy the bad, bad guy. guy yeah the bad realized guy realized the cop had gone to slide lock that's right and um, uh, he came up to shoot him and as he was reloading and uh, the officer his partner uh, shot the bad guy um, uh, center mass with a with our 115 bond of defense wow um, and uh, it, was over it dropped him. Point. Yeah, it dropped him like a sack of flour. Is what the the, uh, the official report. The official. That's well. Yeah. Then <laughs> sack I, of yeah, flour. Yeah. It, it was sack of flour, period. and um, the actual uh, officer that that called and talked to me about it uh, um, used different words, but um, cool. but it was it was immediate. It was an immediate drop, and and it's, wow. it, that's what speed and and quick expansion can do. Uh, on, a, on a bad guy is create tremendous temporary stretch cavity, which you don't see in gel unless you run it in slow motion. Right. Um, That's you're right. That's one of the amazing things that happens, and it's got to be slow motion, right? Mm -hmm. you, you shoot gel, it just go boom, and it's done. Yep. But in slow motion, you realize that this whole thing is expanding and contracting. And That's right. You imagine uh, on tissue, tissue is just tissue. It's not. It's not made of wood or stone or anything like yeah. that. So. Yep. You start ripping things apart. And you know, to, along those lines, you want the bad guy to stop right now. That's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Like basically another second, yep. second and a half, it and he's done. he's shooting the cop who's trying to get a reload in. That's right. And you don't need, you need him to stop in 20 seconds from now. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care if I don't want, I don't necessarily want him to die. I don't care about that. I just want to stop what he's doing right yes. now. Yep. Stop what you're doing. And and that that's a like you said that's a perfect example of of you, you one 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 second two seconds whatever it took for him to to pull the trigger mm -hmm. um, he had one chambered and all he had to do was actually pull the trigger and, yeah and uh, it's scary to to think that that's there um, and uh, they they attributed that specific round to to save his life because they said that the uh, if it had been hadn't been because that's just a really fast round from the gun oh, they're yeah. using it from. It's going sixteen hundred feet per second. Yeah, it's really fast. Three fifty seven sig. Yeah. That's one of those cartridges that it's kind of a sleeper. Yes. You know, it's there. It's still there. But when you actually look at it, you go, "Man, I don't know. That's pretty awesome." That you just look at it on paper and the mm -hmm. numbers and the specs on it. That that it's a. A lot of people will say it's a faster nine, and. Technically, yeah, it is. But if you use a bullet designed for this 357 SIG and not just throw a nine bullet in, mm -hmm. which uh, none of our 357 SIG lineup does that, because when you do that, um, it doesn't perform like anything other than a faster nine. Right. And a lot of time you get a lot too little penetration, like I was saying before. Right. You're going too fast. Uh, or a really fragmenting round that doesn't do much. Yeah. Uh, damage deep at all. And if you use the correct bullet for it. Um, the difference can be the difference between a, th a 38 special and 357 magnum, and no one calls a 357 magnum a faster 38. No, no one calls it that. Well, I mean, 357 magnum was the law enforcement standard for decades. Yeah, and it was really considered after lots and lots of engagements and shootings. It was, they called it the man stopper. Yeah, I mean, it was like this thing is magic. When you have good shot placement, it works. Yep, and Correct me if I'm wrong, but the 357 SIG, the idea was, let's try to get a semi-auto cartridge that would perform mm -hmm. like a 357 Magnum. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly right. When it first came out, 125 at 1450 was kind of the 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 old uh, four-inch barrel ballistics right. on 357 Magnum. Right, bullet. Yep, yeah. at, at 1,450 feet per second. That was kind of the magic touch. Mm -hmm. And you get, a, get an expanding bullet made for that speed. And when it originally came out... Um, that's what it did from a full size Glock, which I think were the first ones that came out that actually they beat they beat <laughs> Sig to it. I think <laughs> that's kind of funny, but it, from a full size Glock they would go fourteen fifty, um, and then for some reason people didn't like the way it felt shooting it or something, mm -hmm. or it wasn't comfortable enough, or it didn't shoot soft enough, or whatever, and so they backed it off, and a lot of manufacturers backed it down to thirteen hundred, thirteen and a quarter. 1275. Kind of like what they do with the 10. They did it's exactly like, the same thing. It's, a, the it's yep. this high performance magnum. Mm -hmm. And now, but let's just make it a little bit weaker. 
Like, what, yeah. What's and then that? it becomes a fast nine. Right. That's, I mean, really, uh, at the end of the day, you have this, all this development and all this research and all this uh, testing to get this, like you said, a magnum type round. And, and then that people adopt it and say, ah, it's too much. And right. uh, the only thing that I don't like about the SIG is it's noisy as heck. Man, yeah. it sounds like a rifle. Fireball. But, but yeah, actually, yeah, fireball is coming out the end. No matter if you use flash suppressed powders or not, it's it's going to have fire. And, and um, but the recoil isn't a big deal at all. It's super. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, if you can, it, what we're looking for, honestly, is we're looking for the, the Star Wars blaster. We want lots of power with like zero recoil. That's right. The, the, <laughs> the laser comes out that doesn't yeah. give any recoil. Exactly. That's what you're looking for. <laughs> it blows people back, you know, blows up tanks or whatever. Yeah. And there's yeah. no recoil. I mean, if we can get to that. So you talked about all the different loads you guys do. Are there one or two weird ones that you like that people may not be familiar with? Uh, there is a lot that that we make that people aren't familiar with, but the the one and you and I have talked about it before, mm -hmm. but we haven't talked about it for a while is the equalizer. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Um, the the equalizer, uh, the dual projectile round that we that we make. <laughs> that's two two yeah. projectiles. Two projectiles. Uh, one one load there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, so you have a hollow point in front, mm -hmm. and then you have, is it a ball? Yeah, so now it, we, we, we do it with a hard, a hard cast solid. It's actually a full, so we used to do it with a ball. Now okay. we do it with a full um, wad cutter in the back. Oh, so okay. it's, it's got a flat cutting surface on the front every time it shoots. And so um, it's the only, so there have been a, some duplex loads, they called them back in the day, mm -hmm. where they just put a couple pieces of buckshot, like I think that Remington did a long time ago. Right. And they called them multiple munitions or something like that. Okay. Um, 80s stuff. And it right. was and it was super cool. Um, you know, have like two shots in the 38 or whatever that sure. came out at the end at 800 feet per second or something. Um, this is completely different um, because it's got a functional hollow point in the front, where if there wasn't a rear projectile, the functional hollow point would do a great job on its own. Sure, but the, and the rear projectile, if there wasn't a front hollow point, um, would do a great job on its own too. A full wad cutter is a deadly you, defensive tool. There are you'll hear people say yeah. talk about wad cutters as as a defensive load. Yeah, so if you if you use swage lead, just soft lead that you can bite with your teeth and make a mark, mm -hmm. um, it's not as it's not as effective um, because it won't cut. Yeah, um, the it, we use a hard cast, 21 Brunel hard cast. We, we make all of our own hard cast yeah. for hunting. Um, and so we, we make that projectile in-house. Um, and so it's got a full, like let's say our 9 millimeter equalizer. I'll just use sure. that for example. It's 165 grain total weight going 1,000 feet per second. So okay. it's really pretty powerful for a 9 millimeter. It's a plus P load. Um, it hits really hard, but um, it creates two specific wound channels. And so what you get is you get 115 grain uh, hollow point mm -hmm. going a thousand feet per second, yeah, and hitting the bad guy and opening up in a controlled fashion, going about fifteen inches. That's what you get. And on its own, it's uh, it would be like a not a light nine millimeter sure. hit on its own. But then the rear projectile is fifty grains, and it's a full wad cutter. So it's a full three five five um, caliber wad cutter with a cutting surface in the front. And so when it hits it, it cuts great holes in paper. That's what I call it a lot. say, that's got to get pretty good penetration. It does. It, it ends up getting, so it's lighter, so it doesn't get two feet. What you would but, in, a, in a hard cast yeah, projectile. Yeah, exactly. But it does get about 14. Yeah. So you end up with 14 inches, and, and as it's going through, it, it actually cuts well enough that you can stick a pencil in and, and it, so the, the, the medium doesn't close up behind it. Interesting. The tissue won't okay. close. It's cut. So people are going to hear about this, and they're going to go, okay, I, I pull the trigger. It's one shot. There are two projectiles coming out. How close or far apart are they? Oh, that's general? a good question. Yeah. So at contact distance, really close, it just makes one gigantic sure. wound channel, and sure. they start to separate in the gel. So in the, in the bad guy, they start to separate somewhere in the middle there. Um, but when you're shooting further out, at, let's say seven yards, um, it's two separate wound channels that are touching pretty much. Pretty close. Yeah, okay. within, within a half an inch. So even at a further defensive distance, call it 
20 feet, 25 feet. How far apart are they, you think? Uh, no more than an inch or two. Okay, this yeah. is, it's not spreading out. Mm -mm. It's not like, oh, we're going hit, to hit them in the hip and the neck. I mean, yeah. It's still an inch or two apart, at, even well, at a fur further distance. They wouldn't spread out at all if they, if they were... Um, if they were staying together all the way until the end of the barrel, they, but they get a, a little bit of separation as they're coming through. And so you have one that's in the barrel slightly longer sure. than the other one. And so um, they, uh, the, the gun is moving tiny, tiny bits. Sure. As, and so what that does is that, is that just barely makes their trajectory a little bit different. At 25 yards, you're typically, which is way past defensive distances, yeah. you're typically about two and a half or three inches difference. Still, uh, you know, and that's what I would prefer. I don't yeah. want it to spread out massively. Yeah, me too. I, I'd, I'd rather them be, you know, fairly on top of each other, very close. Because If I make a good shot, right. I want both of them to be a good shot. Yeah. If I make a bad shot, well, maybe that rear projector will make up for it. Yeah, but <laughs> right? I, you don't want to spread it out. <laughs> yeah, it's not, no. yeah, That's interesting. So, all right, so how can people, if they're going, this guy's crazy, he's loading all this stuff, but I like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how... Yeah. How much, uh, how do they find out about you guys? Where do they go? Uh, you can go to doubletapammo.com okay. and you can just see all of our lineup. It's all there waiting. All right. Fun stuff, innovative stuff. But the thing is, testing. What actually works, what doesn't work. And when you ran through everybody else's stuff and you didn't like it, you said, screw it, we're going to make our own stuff. That's right. <laughs> yep. All right. Mike McNatt, Mike from Double Tap Ammo. Um, Thanks for being on this, man. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. That's it for us on Gun Talk Nation.